So hello, welcome to Meanwhile in the Falklands, our fourth podcast in this series. If you were re- li- oh, watching this, listening to this, listening to this okay. years in advance. This is all still on beta listeners at the moment, although we're making some headway, aren't we, to get it onto mm. iTunes? And everything. Yeah, indeed. Um, just need to chat with uh, Mr. Fantastic Website Man and... Uh, mm. You can, you can link them up and then uh, then they'll be on iTunes. Yeah. Brilliant. So, I'm Paula. I'm Katie. I'm Tom. And I'm Hannah. And we're sitting in a cafe somewhere in Stanley. <laughs> Not <laughs> <serious> <laughs> joy. And it's Tom's birthday today. <laughs> Happy Woo! birthday. Thank you. So, what have you done so far today? Well, so far today I have woken up, which was very <laughs> difficult. You know, as you get older, yeah. um, it becomes harder and harder. Uh, <laughs> I love um, how you keep looking at me when you say that. <laughs> I'm the oldest of the younger, younger FI team. <laughs> I don't know how nicely to Nicely done, yeah. nicely done. Uh, so, uh, so, I am definitely so putting, oldest. Putting yourself down there whilst firing a shot at Paula. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well done. <laughs> I, yeah, I so are you out partying tonight? Um, tonight, no. Very, um, obviously, there is uh, there's an event going on this evening in, uh, in Stanley. Um, which we were normally, well, normally we would all film, but uh, one of my bosses very kindly offered <laughs> to cover my filming role this evening to allow my better half to take me out for dinner. Excellent. So it'll be a nice, quiet evening out for dinner tonight, and then uh, and then there's football on tomorrow. So and tell I'll us be about embracing. your lovely gifts we got this morning. Well, I was going to say, showered in gifts. Yeah, I've got more gifts than I've received for like the last five years. So, <laughs> so got some uh, very nice cufflinks. Uh, from the better half again. Little penguins. Some little penguins on them, so no matter where I am in the world, I think of the Falklands. Nice. Um, <laughs> then I got, I'm always, always losing my keys. Always. So she got me a little thing uh, to put on your key ring, and if you whistle, um, it starts beeping. Which yeah. the girls, so we're which all going to be whistling at you. Yeah, I was going to say, the girls are having yeah. great fun with so far today, just yeah. walking past me and whistling. So <laughs> we've, all, we've also identified the key it's in as well, so we know what, what mm. pitch to put it at. <laughs> so. Yeah. and it whistles back at you but moving on from this um, our topic this week that we're going to chat about is alcohol and um, I, we did a FITV did a, um, a an advertising campaign or a promotion a few years ago um, the government did a, a big thing about um, sexual abuse and stuff like that and I was under the impression that the next one they were going to look at would be alcoholism and um, it's never sort of really come forward so what are you guys you've come you're young you party a lot <laughs> you come to the so fort- much, yeah, not so much because obviously she's the oldest of the youngest <laughs> of people um, but how are you guys found it coming here that amount of out is it seriously different from the UK uh, I wouldn't say different I'd say there is a heavy drinking culture in the UK but I'd say there is equally a heavy heavy drinking culture here it just might mm. I don't know but I, I mean, it depends on the times it because at home everything is open till three, four in the morning. Nightclubs you start drinking later, so you would go out on a night out probably half past ten, eleven. Mm. Whereas here everything shuts at half eleven, so people are drinking a lot earlier than I am used to. <laughs> but do you think because they're drinking earlier, say here you start at eight o'clock in the evening because your night ends at? half past 11 does that mean you're drinking more than if you I start drinking so. at half 11 in the UK and drink until 3 I think so because you're more pressured to, to be drunk when you're out whereas in the UK you can go out sober and drink yeah. for a longer period of time you've got more time to get drunk or have a drink yeah I think I think one of the, the differences in terms of time is that a lot of people don't want to stay out until three o'clock in the morning. So if people go out at nine o'clock in the evening in the UK, they'll have a few drinks and they won't be absolutely uh, hammered. Hammered. Yeah, I was going to say, what's a polite way of putting that? There's more ca- uh, casual drinks, isn't there? Yeah. Whereas here, I don't think when everyone goes out on a Friday and a Saturday, it's kind of drink, yeah, drink, um, drink, drink. It's I think, very quick. I think and for those around. of you who are listening, Hannah's just doing. Imitating yeah. and drinking lots <laughs> yeah. and lots and lots. <laughs> I think for the me, universal yeah. sign language. A bit strange because I was living in Paris before I moved down here. So when I first moved there, I've got three friends here from the UK as well, and we all used to go out together every weekend. Um, we kind of assumed that we would be able to drink very similar to how we do in the UK, but actually the drinking culture isn't as big there, and we found that we were the ones that were ordering more and drinking more while we were in Paris. It's it, it's really quite different to do what you'd assume. Do you think the drinking culture 
in Selkirk is similar to the drinking culture here because it's a small community and I don't know nightclub wise what yeah you so prefer, Selkirk's in the Scottish borders which is where I grew up it's um I think the pubs are very much the same and in it, it closes at 11 the exact same so yes it is very similar and the people that you find in the pubs you get a variety of people in a variety of ages I would go to the pub with my dad at home and I would go to the pub with my dad here but I wouldn't go to the pub with my dad in a city in Edinburgh things like that I wouldn't take him to a club that I'd usually go to you know um, so I think I think there's pros and cons to both to but both do you think it's because of that small community I think mentality so. and there isn't the option or it's not as accessible to be like right well, we're going to go out to a bar or a nightclub or whatever where we can drink later but it's kind of the pressure of all We've only got until this time, so we've got to drink, drink, drink. Or is it anything to do with the price? Because obviously and the alcohol cheaper. price mm. down here is, is a lot cheaper. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think at one stage, um, a can of beer was actually cheaper than a bottle of water. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was not so long ago. But um, That's similar to uni, I think, with SU bars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because everything is so cheap, you're more inclined to buy two drinks at the same time. Do you know what I mean? And be one in one hand. And which, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But also, I also think there's an element of there is there's there's more to do. Uh, in the UK, I would go out drinking, as you say, and I'd go out clubbing, but I wouldn't do it at the weekend. And I know that might have been UK, you know, uni culture, part of me more than anything else. But at the weekend, there were things I wanted to do. I, I wanted to go like surfing, I wanted to like go out into the peaks, and I wanted to go and go and do things. Whereas I, I don't know, there aren't as many many clubs around here. And things to do, it's not as accessible. There, like, there are more opportunities here, I'd say, but to be able to go for a, a walk up a mountain, you can't mm. just walk, you've got to phone someone up. There's but, but you still, yeah. it's more, it's, you've got it's that far, but, it's yeah. but it's difficult because you still can. And like the Peak District, as you say, it's just, like, it's, it's huge. It's, it's such like an iconic thing within the UK. But the mountains here are still, you can walk up them and it's still very enjoyable. You've got Tom Down, you've got Harriet. But I also think one of the differences in the UK when I go to, when, I, when you go to a variety of different community events, there might be like one stall selling like some craft ale or some different kind of drinks where it's like you go there to like, oh, I want to go and try that beer because that's a special beer from this brewery down the road. Mm. Whereas I feel like pretty much every event here involves a bar, a bar. that's stocked mm. up with Budweiser. Um, yeah. Or any other alcoholic drink that's available to purchase down here. Yeah. <laughs> in can or bottle form. It can, be yeah. easier. it can be easier down here as well to... I think because in, in cities you can choose what you want to drink. For example, you can buy the drink that you know sits well with you. Whereas here, there's less option and there's a very big price difference between beer and things like spirits and wine, things like that. So sometimes it's easier to drink something that you know isn't what you actually want and doesn't sit very well with you. So I think that could be a lot of the reason why you do find people that are quite drunk and, and pubs mixing and things like that. as well. Mixing, mixing, mixing is a yeah. big thing. Yeah. And then taking back to a point Katie was making earlier about her time in uh, her time in Paris and mm. how different that culture was. I grew up in the south of France, and um, the difference is everybody drinks. They do, but nobody gets absolutely. That's happy. it. Yeah. yeah. And that is like, it. I had my first glass of wine like watered down at a friend's parents' house at dinner when I was nine years old. I had a glass mm. of red watered down with some water. Basically, tasted horrible. And I was like, meh, whatever. But you drink it because. Like your friend sat next to you, it's nine years old, and you're drinking it. And the, and the the alcohol is brought in at that young point. You go and you visit the vineyards, and you go and taste the wine. And when you go and pour the wine out of the big big vats, like you don't then drink it. They they swish it around their mouth for flavour, and they and they'll spit it out into a bucket. It's more about the the enjoying enjoyment of the beverage rather than just drinking it. Trying to get, it's yeah. 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 Trying to get a buzz. I yeah. think because at first you're shocked when you know that young people in France are allowed to have alcohol, but actually it's a really safe way of introducing it because in the UK and lots of other places in the world don't drink until you're 18 all of a sudden you have the power to do that and I think that's why so many young people lose control of that in in France it's brought into you gradually Mm -hmm. and in a very safe and controlled environment at the dinner table with your parents and it's why you have that stereotype when your first real big blowout is GCSE leavers you'll finish your GCSEs Mm -hmm. you go and have like a house party or you you go into like you're in the countryside such as Selkirk or somewhere in Wales or something like that you go and have a party in a field and you never really had alcohol before and you mm. all take three litre bottles of Strongbow yeah. and, and anything else <laughs> yeah, your mum would go like, here's yeah. a four pack of Smyrna Ice and 
any other drink that we're not advertising. Um, <laughs> but you go and do that, and that's why there are so there are so many stories of people having to be like collected at ten o'clock. The stomach's they, pumped. They've drank too yeah. much. The stomach's yeah. pumped. And it does worry me as a you know as a, as a mother that young teenagers being pressurised into getting as drunk as possible as quick as possible because it is there is a lethal dose isn't there and there is been cases or is it just me reading was it always like this what was it like when you were our age oh god let's not go into that no but has there always been a bit do you think do you think drinking culture uh, our generation of drinking culture quick 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 quick, quick, i don't know because i is different to how it used to be or i mean when i was your age yeah we used to to get drunk and stuff, but not as I, you know, as easy. I suppose when you're older, you, you walked further to school, and everything was just a little bit harder, wasn't it? But I don't know. It just, yeah. just never really attracted me to lose control like that. So it's never really anything I. I also, I, I also don't want it to like feel like we're like completely bashing on like the idea of drinking culture because. Yeah. I have to say, like, as much as we're talking about potentially some negatives and some different ways of life and doing it, like, some of my best years were at university, getting mm. really drunk with your friends, yeah. the, the funny stories come out of it, and I, though we don't drink, though I don't drink as much as when I was 19 and I was 20 when I was in first and second year of uni, like, I, I went home, back to, I went back to the UK for a few weeks, I meet up my friends from uni, and you still, you sit there in the park, like, with just a drink, in the sunshine, having a chat, reminiscing about that time when he got really, really drunk and came home with a cone on his head. And <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit silly, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you're going to carry that on for the rest but of your life. I also think for some people who might be quite shy, having a drink lets them let their hair down a bit, you know, as a way of relaxing, and they come out of their shell, you know, and they're perfect. Yeah, yeah. So it, I think it one depends the, on the individual person. One of the criticisms especially down here in the Falklands, is that there's not anything else to do. Um, what would you say about it? But uh, there is, isn't it, there? There's clubs to join and everything. Because there is, I got told when I first came down here, there isn't really that much to do. So I jumped in and tried to do everything, and all of a sudden I didn't have a spare minute. And then, But there's also the things, uh, things close a lot earlier, and we emphasise this beforehand. But say, for example, you want to get something. The, one of the weirdest things is taking it on a slight tangent. But one of the weirdest things for me is like shops close at five during the week. Mm. So if I want to get anything done, I have to ask permission to leave work, or I have to take my lunch in break writing. To go yeah. yeah, absolutely. Get as it signed it, by two is, superior members of staff. Uh, yeah, as um, is the FITV policy. But I, that's if you want to go and buy anything around here, that's it. And I think that's one of the differences as well. Things close early, not just the pubs, but everything else. And it's just you want to go and do something after. And especially, I think winter is coming up to winter. You know, winter time. It's cold, it's wet. Mm. You want to be in a nice warm pub, knitting. safe night, knitting. knitting. That's what you need to be doing. Do you know what I mean? It's sociable. Yeah. What's I, the thing we got like that dungas, dungarees, some dung, after. Is it dungas? Yeah. Dungas where, where people where go like, straight they, from work to the pub and just it's drink. Like all Friday night, them. yeah. They, they go straight from work to the pub mm. and then just drink until they want to go home. I yeah. Guess, yeah. I think there's, there's I another think part of it. Can have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that have dinner. I know that when me and my mum um, would go out for a drink in the UK, I would drink a lot faster and I would hold my drink, my hand over the top of my drink um, and she would ask me why I was drinking my drink so fast and because she would take her time and enjoy it. But you know that when you're in clubs and things like that, you can't leave your drink open and you can't leave it sitting on a bar. So the reason why you drink fast is because you need to make sure that you're watching it all the time and I think oh, that's gosh, the difference that's between awful. different no, generations. It's also like if you want to dance, you don't want to be going over and dancing and holding three drinks or yeah. two drinks. You there drink is. it really quick, get on the dance floor. Do you know? There is that. The club, I, actually, that's a really and good point. And in the globe, it's like yeah. that. It's, no. a, it's a club in nature. You don't go onto the dance floor with a drink because that drink it. gets spilt all over you. Or, or on or someone else. else. Yeah. So what you do is you buy your drink, you drink it relatively quickly and then you start dancing. And then somewhere, 10, 15 minutes later, you're back to the bar, you get... And that's why like shots and Jaeger bombs and things they get it's down quick, very quickly. Yeah. That's why they're so popular. And it's like a cycle, isn't it? You dancing, going to the toilet, having a quick drink, back on the dance floor. I'm so glad that I'm the oldest member of the older section of the <laughs> FIT. I'm part of the older stuff. section too. <laughs> right, let's move on. What have we done this week? We oh. made fudge. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Lovely. That was really good. That was appreciated by the whole of Stanford. That's services. the first time I've ever made fudge. Oh, really? And I actually think it went really well. It just t- well, it it was tasted, very sugary. It, it tasted amazing, but it was a bit like biting into a sugar cube. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! It was like I had two pieces, and, and I think um, 
Yeah. So he made a very good point. Like on the day we were making it, um, Hannah and you know, were chatting away about it. She's like, when you actually make it, I think you're less inclined to eat so much. Could you realise how much sugar is going into this thing? <laughs> Yes, indeed. So, what else have we been working on this week? You went to see the demolitions. Well, that's why you weren't here yeah. last week for the demolitions. How did that all go? Yeah, it was really, really interesting, and it was. I got to press the button, which was really good fun. Oh, so I made it all go it. boom, yeah. <laughs> which was really good. Which and one did you do? Did you do that massive big one, or did you do the little tiny? <laughs> the so, there was, so there was one big explosion, and then there was a very little one. And it was me that did the very little one, and they said it's because I didn't press the button I was hard enough. Say, did you yeah. not press it hard which enough? I believe that's, that's, that's what happened to uh, the governor, um, Nigel Phillips, Mr. Nigel Phillips, who when he went down for his uh, his first one, his uh, his wife Emma, oh. like, she pressed the button and. Big explosion, then it came Nigel's turn. You're he joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't press it hard enough, and it was just a very small it, It's a demining, it's, I think it's just a demining joke. Don't yeah. worry, they're just having you on. Yeah, the only That's problem good. that did happen was I did have my Falkland Islands phone in my pocket. <gasps> but that was oh, an indestructible no. phone. It's what, for, It was a big, listeners. chunky Nokia, yeah. like big old Nokia. Nokia. We kept 3310. And phoning you, knowing that your phone had fallen out and been crashed. Got by blown a, up. <laughs> And ran over. Oh, forgot. So oh, yeah. fell out my pocket and it's now gone. So. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, it was a really fun trip. Oh, <laughs> what have you been up to this week? You made a hat. You must mention oh, that. No, oh, is the hat. No, 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 no. Last night. Yeah, I. Oh no, that one. Yeah. That one was all right. That worked out okay. But um, I spun some wool, and the idea is that you chuck it in the washing machine, it felts mm. and goes. But it's huge now. It can fit about three people <laughs> under it now. And I think by the time it's been washed, washed yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's gonna. Same as the jumper. You witnessed the jumper. Oh yeah, the jumper that was hideous. But it's a nice colour, My... and I think if you boil it up, it should be fine. <laughs> boil it boil up. Boil it up. It'll be it. fine. <laughs> What about you, Thomas? What you've been working on this week? Uh, well, I've been carrying on with more production and stuff, but like we've gone to government, we went to like government, oh, two, we, two government house receptions in a row. Are we regulars now. Yeah, so, so. You look very smart. Can I just say that I watched the rushes and I saw you in in the rushes and you you looked very smart. Thank you very much for representing FITV. Always FITV look very very in smart for these kind of events. Yeah, well, we do. Like, yeah, <laughs> see it's, how we it's, link it's all it's the podcasts house. together. <laughs> You go back to podcast. Was it podcast one or two? Oh, podcast two. Two is when I just yeah. got back. It was that suit. Incidentally, I just I'm, I'm just going to keep wearing it until everyone gets bored of it. <laughs> or until I get bored. Again, I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone else is, is it bored three, of it. Have you got waistcoat with it as well? Is it three I piece? don't have oh, a waistcoat. Oh, it's your oh, birthday. We could have got you. Uh, I was <laughs> nothing better was, than a I lovely waistcoat. I was going to get it, but I was on uh, Oxford Street and uh, they oh, got oh, it. darling. I didn't have it in my size. Is that how they say it in London? Oxford. Okay. Well, actually, Oxford Street was a was on the news last night because they're trying, trying to make it uh, traffic free to try and reduce pollution mm-hmm. so, okay. which uh, yeah. one thing we don't really struggle with is traffic pollution down here <laughs> I mean you get three cars in a row and I'm like oh my god it's a traffic jam <laughs> and then I went back so to the true. UK and my mum's commute to work in the morning she oh, sits yeah. back a mile and a half from these traffic lights and she's like oh god perspective <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and we've looked tackling the issues of camera issues because we're going to have some issues tonight because it's, it's going to be dark. Oh, we did a great experiment. Oh, oh, so a so great was... experiment of yeah. a million shots with all the different ND filters and the uh, So what, one of the things we were struggling with is um, that the problem in the Falklands is how quickly the light changes and cameras when you can set things very manually uh, it can be very difficult to get the right settings do you think it's to do with the ozone because the it's the ozone layer so the light can come in more i don't know and that maybe there's less obstruction by buildings as well yeah. so the light comes at you at a much flatter angle a lot of the time it can be it, it could be a variety of different things the fact that we're surrounded by water that's something as well but you, found, of the water. you found that great book didn't you was it typography or something that was called where it was to do with the all the different filters and what we can do for our oh, it was a, it was a, it was a tv i was like we made this mistake so many times and so many times our shots would come out just completely out of focus no matter Light. how so we yeah, yeah so um the the term that is referred to officially is called muddy it's when your footage comes out muddy 
I only know this because I've searched so hard using blown out footage and, <laughs> and just explosions were coming up. That's not what I mean. But I like the way they said about using the ND filter settings. It's almost like putting sunglasses on your camera. Yeah, so yeah. You, you know, yeah. that makes sense. Variants yeah. of sunglasses. But and what, it actually worked, didn't yeah, it? When we of, did our landing day. Yeah, one of the, the things, one of the things we found is that there are, so the ND filter, as Hannah just explained, is like sunglasses for your camera. And when it, got a, when it gets a bit sunny and the image is a bit too bright, we, we, turn, on, we turn on an ND filter. And what we were doing, we were putting on one or we were putting on two sometimes maybe, and the footage was coming out muddy, blown out. So no matter how hard we focused, uh, when the image came up onto the computer, it was all a bit soft. It wasn't very crisp, it wasn't focused. Um, and going through it, Hannah and I did an experiment where she, uh, she set up the camera in one position and did five seconds filming with every, every different, different aperture, and every different ND yeah. filter. And we found that using the higher level of sunglasses, <laughs> actually works a lot better because we were confused and we thought maybe there was something to do with depth of field but it, tur it turns out that a high sunglasses high ND filter and a low aperture even though you'd expect a shallow depth of field when it's on a wide angle it's what works best so we all filmed with the highest ND filter for landing day and all the shots came out really well I yeah really had... really nice and they had the sun coming up and the Clyde Really speaking, good of, as well. speaking of which, it was your first landing day. What did you guys think yeah. of the service? This is the start of the memorial season for you? Well, um, I was positioned on top of a hill to try and get quite a far away shot so I couldn't actually hear or see anything. But there was a sheep Aww. that kept on walking past me and sat down next to me for a while. Oh, really? So, yeah, I think it was me uh, and the sheep from the farm. It yeah. was, so it kept coming around, it came up like, at the end. Sniffing I think Katie got yeah. a lovely shot. Like, it came up to me and I just put my hand down and it started like, rubbing up against my hand. Oh, that's but, so um, I did. I did come over and give you a copy of the. So yeah. I was getting some external, some more rushes as I was walking around, and Hannah and I were quite close to the whole thing. But Katie's quite far away, so I got a little uh, little booklet of the service and ran that up to Katie. So she was just stood up there reading through the service as it was going along. I was trying to hear where we were. <laughs> the, la the last post was a. Uh, oh, because you, they didn't have a trumpeter, did they? Now yeah. it's an electronic gone. MP3. Yeah. Job. And and, and bless him. Like I spoke to him at the start and. Uh, and he tried, he really did try. He searched for hours online for the best quality one that he could find. It just that it was as loud as it could go. It was yeah, as loud as it could go. It still go. sounds like it's been produced by a very, very cheap synthesizer. Mm. But, um, but hey, you've hey. got to make the most of what a bad got, situation. Yeah. What's coming up next week? Your birthday. My birthday. This time next week. Double birthday. Oh. Having birthday. We're not saying how old we're going to be, though, are we? 32. No, I'm not going to be 45. <laughs> oh, well, guess my age. There we go. That's the uh, yeah. 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 quiz of the week. Yeah, talk about quiz. Just from the voice. Yeah. Talk about quiz of the week. Do you listen to BFBS? They've got this. Uh, these three voices that you have to listen to. It's been going oh, yeah. round for weeks and weeks and weeks. No, I got the answer. Weeks. They just got a second one today. The, la oh. the last one that I did, the only voice I got was Alan Shearer, football player. So I was like, as soon as I said it, I was like, match of the day, that's Alan Shearer, got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what are you guys working on next week? Well, the big, biggest event's got to be tonight. Come on, guys. Yeah, Mabel. Yeah. Mabel. Mabel. We're going to do it slightly differently, Mabel. though, aren't we? Pink 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 yeah, I've got a big 5K run. <laughs> are, you, are you seriously going to run it? Yeah. Okay. I need to get in training. <laughs> I'm going to take the store shots back at the... Uh, Get a good it's one of me coming over the I'm line. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> as long as you trip. Oh, we've got another memorial, don't we? Goose Green. Yeah, we've got another memorial. Yes. Yeah. Of course, and we're Which? attending the mudge, uh, the, yeah. budget. The, the budget. The budget. The budget. <laughs> For some reason, the, it's, budget. Yeah, the, uh, the budget is on the same day as the Goose Green Memorial, which I think is yeah. poor planning, really. Yeah, because that means some of the MLAs will come to yeah, the but having, memorial. Yeah, but having spoken to uh, the MLAs at Government House last week, mm -hmm. Um, I believe two are away at the moment. I believe that MA Roger Edwards is still away for the C24, and I do believe that Mark Pollard is away due to, um, I believe baby. he's having a baby. Um, he's well, having he's a not, baby. his wife's having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are having a baby. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that leaves six of them, and, and like, they can't do have any less. Have yeah, have six to yeah. serve the budget. So. And yeah. I mean, that means I don't know if uh, the governor, Nigel Phillips, is back at the moment or whether. Um, it, yes, he is, because I spoke to Government House. A few days ago, and they said yes, he would be attending the budget. Well, then they were scooting straight up to Goose Green. No, or? no, they couldn't confirm who was going from Government House oh, to Goose Alex, Green. Alex, but we're going to yeah. presume it's going to be. Um, and to be fair, Alex, Alex went up and, on um, 
land, for landing day at San Carlos mm. as well. Yeah. Nigel, he's this. great. I think he's very stylish. Yeah. He's a wonderful he's speaker as well. Yeah, I mean, we heard, we heard two of his speeches. He's, funny. he's yeah. a funny, funny guy. <laughs> I said, I can't believe how well, like, how well he remembers his speeches and doesn't really trips over his words. It's, yeah, it's great. Very eloquent speaker. <laughs> Especially when he's got one reception after another. You know, you'd think you'd get start mixed talking, up with Start talking about hockey and stuff <laughs> yeah. in a day. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so you went what to Costa Rica. I mean, you, you came to the Falklands. <laughs> <laughs> that could be awkward. <laughs> so just if you're listening to this and you're wondering how you can, listen, how you can watch FITV or Falklands in Focus, uh, if you go to our website, fitv.co.fk, um, you can click on our channel and you can subscribe for just one one episode or a month or a year and uh, watch us each week. And so you can join each of, them, each of our family members who have all joined us. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you can find out what we actually look like. And oh, you can put a face to our voice. Ooh. Ooh. Figure out who's who between me and Hannah. Who is the oldest? What do you reckon? What colour hair do they have? Tom? Beard? Ginger. No beard. Oh, who knows? <laughs> Why a ginger beard? <laughs> what, am I ginger? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we'll catch you uh, next Friday when it's wee Hannah's birthday. Yay! <laughs> See you later. Bye.